Viewer discretion is advised. Arr, mateys! Hoist the sails and swab the poop deck. It's time for another fat, nasty unboxing. Hmm, hmm, good evening, sir. I would like to barter and get some goods. That's right, everyone. It's in time for another fat, nasty unboxing. And this time, as you can probably see, it is Merchants and Marauders. You know what that means. There's probably going to be a run-through coming soon. <gasps> Ooh, if you haven't caught on yet, that's kind of what I'm doing as of right now. Anyway, so this is a game. Actually, I'm not going to pull the, uh, you know, the, the plastic off because I've already played this game. And even if I haven't, I got this in the trade. So that's, that's why. But it is still so. The inlay is the same, uh, but it is organized, you know, according to how I like to organize. But all the content is still there, so I will be able to do a thorough and hopefully enjoyable unboxing for Merchants and Marauders. Now, let's just jump right in. So, obviously, your... let me, let me see. There we go. So, your copy's not going to come with a crunch side like that, which that makes you want to kill yourself. Christian Marcusen and Casper Agard made one of the greatest games. So, first thing you're probably going to see is a kind of hefty... Rule book. There is about 16 pages, and here's the, here's the thing about these run throughs that I actually really like is I've played this game, so I can tell you guys what <laughs> all the stuff is and what it does. So that's really cool. Um, what I'm probably going to do with a friend from Omaha told me he's like you should probably look up the online rule book and and read the component list for games you don't haven't played. And I'm like, well, pfft, that's a brilliant idea. I'll start doing that. But anyway, you're going to get a rule book that is uh, there's some text. There's some text in there, like, uh, there's some pictures as well, so it's not as, I mean, I've, I've read worse, but it is a wide player, uh, uh, a wide rule book, so there's a lot to, to read and to understand. But 16 pages, like I said, could be worse. Now, that's the rule book. Who cares about the rule book? Next, you're going to get these four player aids. It's a game with one to four players. These player aids are magnificent. They are so good. First thing you're going to get is you're basically going to get like the turn sequence. I hope you can see that um, with the glare in there. But it tells you the glory points, turn sequence, port activities, all of them, what they do, you know, how much everything. Basically, you can almost read this. Get the basis from the, from the rule book, and then this is all you need. It's awesome. Every space on the map is going to uh, tell you what it does. And then on the back... It explains combat and hunt priority from merchants and from, from pirates and then plunder, how you get that, special weapons. This is probably one of the best player aids I have ever seen. It is so good. And there's one for each person. Sometimes they make you share, and no one wants to share when you're a pirate. Ah. Anyway, so those are four player aids. Let's get that out of the way. Now, there is a lot of stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... Uh, I'm not going to take it all out. I, I will. I will take it all out, but I'm not going to organize it because I'm not all punching it. So it's all organized already. But you may be seeing it, and you're like, hmm, hmm, what are these? Well, here is one of the best things about this game. You get actual... actual treasure chests. Like, you put them together, like I'm failing to do right now, and each person gets their own little treasure chest, which is just an aesthetic thing. They didn't have to do it, but it is awesome. What you do with this is when you're at port, you'll collect your gold. You can actually hide it, and that makes it safe for the rest of the game. If you have gold on your ship and you get attacked and you sink, that gold's lost to you. That goes to the person who killed you. Unless it was like a merchant or a pirate, other pirate, um, NPC. <clears throat> then that just goes away. But if I kill you, I get all your gold. So you go to your home port and you exchange it and or you you hide it basically you, you bury it and each person gets one and i just think that is so cool like that's just fantastic and like i said each person gets one no need for me to make all four of them unless i just want to look at four and be happy because it's a really cool thing next is you are going to be getting your different pirate ships there are four pirate okay there's there's technically um Five. Five ships you can get, but there's four models. Um, and it seems like all the blue ones I can pull out. Okay, so these are your four options. 
you have a sloop that is just a little tiny sloop. Um, each ship, which I'll, I'll show, uh, has, uh, you know, their kind of own benefits. The game's called Merchants and Marauders, so pirate or merchant. The sloop is more focused on being a pirate. You don't have to. You can pick a sloop and, and be a merchant. Um, but has more cannons, kind of more maneuverability to hunt down people. Uh, so um, the sloop is mainly meant for pirates. The next one is the uh, flute, which is this little one right here. I'm going to show you the blue ones. Um, and component quality on, on everything is, fan, is, is really good. Uh, there are a few, um, like the, the, the sails, that are kind of twisted on some ships, but this is, I mean, probably because of, you know, it's, it's, I was traded, it was traded to me. And you may be wondering why I'm talking this game up. This used to be on top 10 games I hate until I revised it because uh, I really couldn't merit a good enough reason to say why I hated it after playing it again. But this is the flute. Uh, you start out by being able to pick two ships, the sloop or the flute, basically kind of, and you kind of pick at secret, so uh, everyone reveals at, at the same time, so you can't see what everyone's doing, like, ooh, you all want to be merchants? I'll be a pirate to attack you. So sloop, pirate, flute is mainly if you want to be a merchant. Can hold more cargo to go sell and get uh, glory points, and first one to ten glory points wins to get glory points and um, money by selling goods. So that's the, the flute. The next one is the frigate. Now, the frigate is basically your all-around upgraded ship. You can get a frigate, it's cheaper, if I'm not mistaken, and that's, that's what the frigate looks like. And it's just, uh, yeah, I believe it's threes all across the board, which I'll explain that later. Um, but this is kind of more of the upgraded um, ship from the sloop. It's a little bit better as a pirate ship. Next is the, ah, uh, yep, see, so, like, kind of this, this is the galleon, um, that, so, like, kind of the ship, it's kind of tilting forward, uh, so that's, this is going to happen, unfortunately, so the sails aren't the best quality, like, they're actually all, right now, if you can see, um, tilted at the moment, like that, and so that's just what happens, and I'm afraid to actually bend them and, and tear them off, but this is the galleon, which, when I look at the actual ship cards and show you guys, it will uh, explain a little bit more. But the Galleon, it does hold more, it can handle more, um, but it's more expensive to get. This also is the same ship that you will use if you get a Man of War. The only way to get a Man of War is if you take a, uh, if, you, if you board and take a ship of a country that is at war. Um, which, so the Galleon basically, aww. The Galleon jumps up to a Man of War, and that's when you can take it, and now you have a Man of War. So those are the four ships, and then they all come in the four different colors, blue, green, yellow, and red, basically the standard colors. There are the brown pirate ships that count as the different types of merchant ships, uh, or navy, the navy vessels that will come and attack pirate players. Um, and they go from... Uh, frigate to the uh, frigate galleon and man of war, um, and then these the black ones are the pirates. So there's basically a galleon and a up oh, up oh, and a sloop pirate. And those are the models, and let me just put the, all those back in because I have everything all, all nice, all nice and organized, and also crammed into this this bag, which is also probably why all the sails are bent. Probably put them in the separate bags. Alright, next you're gonna get your standard gold pieces. There's one, two, five, and ten, I believe, are the different things. And <clears throat> this game is so well liked, I watched a how to play video of it. And the, the guy, I think there was like a, this was like his favorite game, so he had metal pieces. You're not gonna get metal pieces, uh, they're standard cardboard, but you know, they it's good cardboard, so there's just some some pieces that you look, and there's, it's a little bit nice, I mean, they kind of just added a little divot in there to make it just not a circle. It really doesn't make a difference, and you can barely tell the divot, but it's there, so get a lot of those pieces. That is just your standard gold coins. Next, you're going to be getting quite a lot of stuff in here, actually. You're going to be getting, let me just, I'll pour these out, because... It, just because I will. 
Um, these right here are the four different nationalities. You have Spain, French, English, and Dutch. So you have the four different nationalities of the different captains and the different, you know, places. Um, these are used to put under a, a merchant or a navy vessel or, no, I guess not a pirate, a navy vessel to tell what nationality it is. What that means is if you attack it, um, it's gonna, you're gonna get a bounty because you're attacking it. And these are the bounty flags, so if you attack a Spanish ship, you're gonna get a Spanish bounty. This also will be put under uh, Man of Wars and, and stuff like that to let you know, hey, these are the countries at war. This is why they're Man of Wars. I don't have it because I threw it away because um, I didn't know what they were. They are, there are the four different colors of the players, the blue, red, green, and yellow. They're just these, but those colors. Because if you take a Man of War, you don't, you get a Man of War card, but it's, it's, a, it's a brown, it's a brown uh, a piece. It does, you, there's no... I guess you can take the... No, because some of these have Man of Wars. I don't know. I think you put them under that ship to let you know that you now have Man of War. I, I'm, I, I threw them away because it's like, just remember that you have a Man of War. So you get these. Next, you are going to be getting... Let's see what's in the stockpile of goodies. Uh, you do have the different nationalities. Nationality flags. You have a lot of them because you can get bounties from them. Each player can get a bounty. And, you know, that determines how much you're wanted for hunt priority from the Navy vessels. Also, these can be used for events. They will go on, they can go on the board and let you know some places have different nationalities. They will also go and, like, you'll take these four and let's say two countries are at war, you'll shake them up and, like, grab two random ones. And this lets you know that the Dutch and the Spanish are at war. So if you have merchant vessels, they are now man of wars. So you get those flags. Next, you get the special, special weapons. These are special weapons you can use whenever you're fighting. You have a chain shot that affects the mast. You have grape shot that will attack their crew. And you have grappling, which helps you board. So these are the three different types of uh, goods that uh, you can get, best of, like weapon upgrades. Also on here, you will see... There's going to be quite a few of these, and I will explain a, a little bit of, of what they do. These that I'm pulling out are ship upgrades. There we go. So, you at each place on the, on the board, I'll show the board last probably, will be one ship upgrade that you can buy, and that's the only one available in that port. And these are ship modifications that you can get. I hope you can you can see them. And these are just a few. I believe there's 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 quite a bit uh, that you can get. And they all do different things. So here's an extra cannon that gives you an extra cannon on your ship. This is a hammock which allows you to get an extra crew. These are sails that allow you to that increase your maneuverability. This is cargo allows you to carry more cargo. And what's this one? They'll tell you almost pretty much on here. Um, those are chasers. If someone tries to flee, you can actually inflict a hit. So these, there's just a whole bunch of modifications that you can grab. One hole that allows you to have a hole. There's, I know there's swivel guns that basically allow you to, yep, a swivel gun right there that allow you to hit someone whenever they're boarding. There's another one that has early attack, which allows you to attack first. And so those are, those are all upgrades that you can get on your ship. And like I said, there's only one in port. The other thing that is in this huge pile of stuff in the bo in the box are cargo cards or cargo card <laughs> cargo uh, tokens these are what goods will be in demand in each port um, obviously it's going to be one token per um, port and what that means is if you're a merchant that's what people are wanting obviously they're in demand if you have a good from the cargo de cargo deck, and you go to a place that has a demand. That's one way you can uh, get um, glor a glory point if you sell three cards that are in demand at a port where they're in demand, and it also doubles their value. If you sell any good, it's three gold. If you sell a good in demand, it's six gold. So obviously, that's eighteen gold right there that you can use. So these will go on every port. One will go on every port, and once you sell something in demand, like if I went to a place with bananas, 
uh, because it's Tortuga and they probably like bananas. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, if I sell a good, if I sell bananas there, then it gets traded out. Obviously, they're not in demand anymore. So then it gets exchanged out from a stack of unused ones, and now maybe wood will be in demand. So that's how merchants are used. The last thing in the stockpile are the merchant tokens. There are obviously the navy vessels, the ships that you can personally attack. There are also just other merchant tokens that are of a nationality, which is how you can start being a pirate and also plunder and get gold um, and, and cargo. So they just have the nationalities on the uh, oops, on the back. These will all be random, face down, with this little uh, thing facing. And you can go search for it, and once you find it, you can choose if it's going to be like, if let's say it was this one. You can choose it to be Dutch. You can't even see that. Dutch, or if it's in a port, like let's say it's a Spanish port, you can choose it to be Spanish, depending on which bounty you want to get. And that's another way combat can happen, is you can scout these merchants, start becoming a pirate, and then just scout them and get gold. And, and if you plunder, I believe, 12 gold from attacking them, that's another way you can get a glory point. But that is a, like all the tokens that you will, you will be getting, that you will use to set up the board. Aw, I dropped one. I'm so stupid. I'm stupid. Next, let's go to the cards. All right. And you're probably looking at the other stuff and you're like, actually, let's just get this out of the way. I don't even want you guys to see the player boards or the, or the map. I want you guys to see the other stuff. All right. You get a big stack of glory cards. Each player starts with one glory card at the beginning of the game, uh, and as you gain glory points, you go up to ten. You could potentially have nine, or if you kill someone, you get their glory cards. Now, there's <clears throat> this is one of the ways that will probably aid you in winning. You get uh, just a lot of event stuff. Like let's say you got fog, and and there's really there's no pictures really. There's some like a I mean the only picture is like a man because these are specialists. Those are what you know help you help aid you in your confusion of, you know, the glory cards. Well, let's say you got Fog. Play this card when a battle is about to begin. You may select any combat action in the first round of combat. Um, normally in combat you have to shoot. If you're in Fog, uh, I guess you can, you get to choose whatever. Uh, shoot, board, or flee. I guess long guns cannot be used against you. That's also nice. So you get these will aid you or, or hurt others. Another one that I had was uh, a mutiny. After someone gained money, you can play a mutiny on them, which means that they have to try and roll their seamanship skill, which I'll explain in a sec. Uh, and that's, that's, they have to either pay their people if they fail or, or die, I think is kind of what it was. Um, so there's some that help you in combat, there's others that you can just play on others that help you any other time. And then there are specialists that you can have if I'm not mistaken, any, you can have, that's this, I have a Master Gunner, Master Carpenter, there's specialists that you can use that will give you a, a benefit to your ship, and there's a lot of different ones that you have to go and try and, and hire, so there's a purser or a lookout. You can have all of these, but you can never have the same type. You can never have, like, two Master at Arms. Um, and I believe that's it. Maybe there's six types. So, they each will have a name and uh, a place you have to go. You have to do a port action in a certain place and you have to do a certain thing to hire them. So, like this guy. You have to, it's Jacques Bonnet, French, oui, oui. You have to go to Tortuga and succeed at a leadership role or pay two gold. And what he does is in crew combat, you can never be forced to reroll leadership, which is what's used in crew combat. And you may reroll a die in leadership every round, so that's what he does. There's a lookout, Julien Dubois, a sharp lookout, is willing to join your crew. Oh, how nice of him. You go to Basse Terre, succeed at leadership, and your leadership, of course, you're trying to be like, Hey, come follow me, I'm not gonna die, I'm a pirate, I'm a worthy pirate. Or, hmm, you know, it's a good, it's a good day, sir, I would like you to join and help me not die, because I'm a bitch merchant. Uh, and you pay two gold, he allows you, you may reroll one die when scouting, or you're immune to the fog and escort cards, which I just read a fog card. There's a purser, 
Earn two extra gold in total when selling goods, or no glory cards can affect your cargo or gold negatively. And I believe, I believe some of these, like, I, I think, I hope they're different. Oh, there's a gunner captain and a ship surgeon. And so there's a lot of different types that you can actually get. I'm not, I'm not going to read them all because I don't want to spoil everything. But they, they aid you. They're, spe they're better, better crew members than just your average crew that dies a lot. Now, I'm not going to talk about the captains yet. Let's go to the different types of ships. Like I said, there are technically five. You can get a man of war, but it's, it's difficult because you have to take the man of war. All right, so this is the sloop. Like I mentioned, sloops are mainly for pirates. They have five different uh, attributes. Toughness, cargo, crew, cannons, and maneuverability. Toughness uh, is going to go to your hull and your mass. Mass, I believe you roll one less die in combat. I can't remember what happens if it gets hit. If your hull ever goes down to zero, your ship sinks. Cargo, how many cargo cards you can have. Crew, how many crew are on your ship, which help you in uh, um, boarding whenever you do crew combat. Cannons, how many cannons you shoot, and maneuverability is used mainly, mainly in merchant raids, which makes them harder to escape from you, but also will give you an extra die if your maneuverability is two or more. Now, let's go to the flute. Let's compare the two. So they kind of have little little art, not a whole lot of, of art. So, a sloop has toughness two, cargo two, crew two, cannons one, maneuverability four. Flute. Toughness three, it, you would think. <clears throat> I guess I guess it's a bigger ship, so it should be able to handle more. Cargo four, obviously more than the sloop. Crew one, cannons one, and maneuverability two. So if these two were to fight, the sloop would get the edge, uh, get one extra die because its maneuverability is higher. That's a flute. You got a frigate. Like I said, it's threes all across the board. So average, actually, probably in some cases. It is, it is like a better ship between the two. The galleon is better than all of them. At the moment, toughness four, cargo five, crew four, cannons four, maneuverability two. So if you get a galleon, you can go both ways at being a pirate or a merchant. Last is man of war. Clearly the better ship. Clearly the better ship. I'll show you that picture because it's badass. Um, and it's also attributes that I hope you can see. Toughness five, cargo three. Who cares about cargo? <laughs> That's enough to go sell goods in demand. Crew five, cannons five, maneuverability two. Like, it's gonna be tough to take down, but those are the five ships that you can get. And let me just set those back in order because I'm I'm an organized loser. And and this is this is who I am. Don't judge me. Don't you ooh, ooh, don't you dare judge me. Captains! Each captain is different. They all have a different national. Well, I mean, out of the four nationalities, there's, uh, like I said, Dutch, Spanish, French, and English. And they all have unique abilities that will help them. And also, pretty much when you're deciding your uh, first beginning ship between sloop and flute, they are kind of will aid you in, in what you want to do. Um, you obviously want to pick a ship that benefits your captain. So, for example, Thomas Nelson. It looks like he would talk like this. Mm-hmm. You obviously can't see it. But, mm -hmm. That's that guy right there. His ability is, and their home port as well. If you ever have a bounty, like let's say a, 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 let's say he had an English bounty. That means every other English port he cannot go into. Except his own. You can always go in your home port thematically, which the rulebook says. You know the ins and outs of your own home port. But his is may take any glory cards discarded by other players, including those due to deaths. So that's really good. You can be like, hey, okay, you're gonna discard that fall card? I want it. Or if they just if they die from like a, a naval ship and they lose five glory cards, you can take all of those. It says any glory cards. So they all have attributes as well as their ships. They have seamanship, scouting, leadership, and influence. Seamanship is basically how well they can um, you know, run their ship, how well they are on the open sea. Uh, seamanship will be used for, um, is, is used in, in, in combat, how well you're, you know, steering your ship to attack. 
Scouting is whether or not how good you are at seeing other ships and also I believe rumors sometimes. Uh, I'll explain that later. Leadership is how well you are at recruiting crew members. Uh, obviously you saw for glory cards for specialists, getting them. And then also crew combat. And then influence is what you'll use. No, influence is what you'll use to gain rumors. And other event cards will cause you to uh, test your influence. So each you know, person has a ability and different type of attributes. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. There's 16 captains. A way a game can end is if all captains die, or if someone dies and there's not a captain to uh, get, then the game is over. So that was glory glory cards, and, and the, the card stock is, is perfectly fine. Uh, glory cards, ship cards, and, uh, and and captains. So that's what those are. You get actually get quite a few cards in, in the base game. Um, I like this game enough, I should just tell it up front that I really want to get the expansion and try that out because more, more stuff is always good. Next, this one will be a quick one. Obviously, they're not going to come with these bags. Or they may. I don't remember. Cargo cards. Like, that's what all these are. You get a bunch of cargo cards that will tell you the different types of goods that will be available. When you go to a good, or a good, when you go to a port and you go to buy goods, you'll draw the top six cards. Three, four, five, six. And see what you want to buy. Let's say, oh, that'd be a really good one. Let's say spices, for example, were in demand. Anytime you buy goods and they're good to demand, you discard them because it wouldn't make sense if, to have them if they were in demand. And you can buy up to how much your ship can hold. Or maybe, um, maybe you can only buy a max of three. But for example, let's say this was the case. So, bunch of rum. That's, this is a really good draw. Wish that happened. If you buy one card, it's three gold. If you buy two cards of the same type, it's two gold apiece. So three gold for one, four gold for two. If you buy three cards of the same type, it's one gold each. So the more you buy, the cheaper it is. So now it's three gold for three cards. You get a draw like this, you definitely buy those cards, and then you go sell them somewhere where rum is in, in demand. Now, cargo cards have a different purpose. They also will be for merchant raids. You remember the little circles with the nationalities on the other end? If you do a combat um, with one of those, the bottom card, this is not how much gold they're worth, like I said, if it's in demand, it's six gold, if it's not, it's three. This is um, how much loot you would plunder if you attacked a merchant, so this is kind of how it works. I'm kind of doing a little how to play, hoo <laughs> that's new. Let's say, when you attack a merchant, you draw three cards. If they have escapes, it has to be equal to, uh, if they're equal to or over the near maneuverability, they flee. Half escapes in this deck, half hits. This tells you that if you that you're gonna take a hit to your mass. Can you see that? Yeah, you can kind of see that. I'll I'll show you a little bit more. So like this, if it escapes, then equal to you know whatever. Then you roll your seamanship, and if you get any successes, then uh, you can add a card. Oh, okay, I'm taking a hit to my hole, but that adds more more gold. This is the gold you plunder if you don't die or if they don't run away. 12 gold that you plunder is a glory point, and you get to keep uh, whichever cargo you hold. Um, you can draw a card, you can discard a card, let's say, you know what, that's fine, I'll discard, I don't want to take a hit. <clears throat> or you can exchange a card, so it's like, okay, well, I don't want to take a hit to my mass, I'll exchange that, and okay, now it's a hit to my hole. After that happens, you add these up, and that's how much gold, so that would be 11 gold. And that's the second part of cargo cards, and you get, basically, there's just a whole deck of them. Now, the last deck of cards that I have are events, rumors, and missions. So, a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of stuff that you can do in this game. So, events get drawn. <clears throat> I don't believe it's every person's turn. I think it's uh, first person's turn. I hope. Events are what's going to bring naval ships out and pirate ships out where they start and how they move. It's a very unique, weird way of doing it. Also, events. So, like, if I were to draw... Okay, not that one. Um, a hurricane. A storm rages across the Caribbean, so it, it affects people. And the next 
is at the top, or we'll do this one, a Spanish naval ship, it'll tell you, you know, have the nationality symbol and their attributes and where they start and um, stuff like that. So this is Spanish naval ship Admiral Manuel de Velasco. Here it has a seamanship, has his scouting, so if you um, go into port with him or he moves towards you, uh, this is how he scouts you. They always have a base of three, almost. No, they don't. They, this one has a base of three, or if you have a bounty higher than that, that is what it's going to be. So if his bounty, if you have a five bounty with a Spanish ship, it's going to roll five dice. Then is their leadership for their crew combat. So does the same thing for pirates and, and other Spanish. Next one, on every event card, you're going to get uh, different types of flags, different combinations. So this is, would be a French ship, a Dutch ship, and a the pirate sloop. There's a directional thing on the, the board that tells you this is how they move. So if there's a ship that's French, for example, it's going to go west. This is how they move. So anytime you draw a card, it's like, oh, okay, now it's the pirate sloop. The Spanish ship, the pirate sloop is going to go west, the Spanish ship is going to go north, and the uh, English ship is going to go south. That's how event cards work. Next are the super fun part of this game, rumors. Anytime you make a port action, you can try and roll your, I think, influence or something to gain a rumor. They tell you, there's not a whole lot of um, pictures on these cards. It kind of gives you, for this, for example, this one is Abigail Rose Williams, daughter of the governor of Nassau, is getting married. Ooh. Rumors are, so this one you would have to go to Nassau, do a port action, um, and then test your uh, um, influence. And if you get a success, then you, um, if successful this round, Nassau will pay you two extra gold for all types of goods except wood. So I guess I, I don't want wood for spanking. I don't know. So if you go and you, and you succeed, you found a rumor to be true, and you get a glory point. If you don't, then it's you wasted your time. It turns out not to be true. So there's a, there's a deck of those for you to do that will test um, your different you know uh, attributes, and then you'll do different actions to do so and go to different places. So those are what's thematic. Last deck is finally missions. There will always be two missions on the board, and they're thematic. And if you complete a mission, they'll give you a benefit, and also uh, give you a glory point. So for example, like I said, it's these and really no text. So earn for settlers in danger. You can earn 10 gold. The requirement, each mission has a requirement that you have to fulfill to even claim the mission, which is during a port action. Uh, influence check and you can't have any Spanish bounties. Location is Santo Domingo. Settlers are in danger. After claiming this mission, you immediately engage the local savage tribe in crew combat. They have two crew and one leadership. If you survive, you complete the mission and end up back in Santo Domingo where you can perform further port activities. And here's some flavor text, which is really nice. Help our poor settlers. We can offer you gold. Just hurry. So you have to fight the Savage Tribe. And once you do that, gain a glory point. Deck of cards about the same as uh, rumors. So those are things that you can do and things that can happen along the way of you being a sexy pirate or a merchant. Alright, next, this one's going to be quick, these are little cubes that, will, that you will put, actually I can do this the same, at the same time, there's four player boards, so, let me see, let me see, there we go, there we go, four player boards, there is going to be room, I used to serve, for your captain, for your ship, for your bounties, for your specialist, your mission, your rumor, cargo, and gold, um, that's where your gold, your gold has to stay on your player board, unless it's in your little awesome, badass treasure chest. But you can cover it and hide it with your cargo cards. This is where your special weapons are going to go, and this is where your ship upgrades are going to go. So everything you need about this game is going to go on here. Next, obviously the dice are perfectly fine. Successes are the cross, skull and crossbones, which is actually really cool. <clears throat> your color cubes are basically going to go on your player board. Whatever ship you pick, if it's, let's say, the frigate to make things easier to explain, it's going to go all right here in three, because that's just where they go. That's, that's where the frigate is. Whenever you're in combat, 
after you, if you deal a hit, you roll a die, let's say it's a one, that means you take a hit to your cargo. If it's a four, you take a hit to your cannons. Cannons, crew, and cargo, and mass can all go down to zero. If your hull goes down to zero, your ship sinks and your captain dies. If your crew goes down to zero <coughs> and you get boarded, your captain dies. So that's just ways your captains can die. So that is the four player boards, which are kind of cool because the background is like the ocean and stuff like that, and then this is like your ship and stuff. So nice background. Okay. Are you ready? You ready for the sexy, sexy board that I've been, you know, keeping from you this entire time? Probably not even gonna fit on on this other screen because I suck. Because I'm stupid. All right. Player board, yeah. All right. Can you can you see that? Can you see? That? You can see that pretty pretty board pretty well. At least enough to explain. Beautiful, beautiful map, kind of really colorful, different sections of everything, and places for it. So, you have, on each port, I'll explain what can, you, what can you see. You can see pretty much everything, actually. Let's do um, Tortuga. That's, that's something everyone knows. Tortuga. So, obviously, it tells you what the space does. Pirates here are invisible to all French naval ships, unless they have a French bounty, and non-player character pirates never scout for French captains. That's awesome. Tells you the nationality of the the place, and also this is where a ship modification is going to go face down. Uh, so one per place, and also face up is the good in demand. So this is where the naval ships are going to go, and the pirate ships. So that's where those will go. If two countries are at war, that's going to go in the corner. And also, if you're ever fighting a naval or pirate ship, this is where you're going to put the brown cubes to indicate what they have. If you ever attack a merchant and they die, it's going to go here. Eight merchants, then they'll all come back. Down here are where glory points are going to go. One of the cubes is going to go at zero and then keeps track of all glory points. And that's, that's the, the, the map. It's very blue because of the ocean. And uh, very, very well done. Each place has a unique uh, uh, ability to go to and do certain things. Um, and this is where you move around. And that, everyone is an unboxing for Merchants and Marauders. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what other unboxings you'd like to see. And um, uh, that's, that's all I got for you. So, hope y'all enjoyed. I don't even know how to do a pirate accent. I'm so stupid and loser-ish. But, if, even if that's the case, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you want to help out the channel, I have my Patreon link right there. If you want to make some suggestions on board games you'd like to see us run through, I have my board game geek list right there. And if you want to just, you know, like the Facebook page, I have my Facebook link right there. Have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.